You want to control him before he gets up, you know, say a Manta style, and obviously the Scotty more so than anything else, but a good pick for Virtus Pro Polar. I think it's good in a lot of ways, but it is going to have one major weakness. You're going up against No-Tails Elder Titan. He is going to have the natural order on you like half the fights, and it is going to be very limiting for Terrorblade. He runs a lot of attribute-based item progression here. He goes for Agility items, the Manta style, Scotty, Butterfly, and that armor that you get from Agility is going to be completely negated by the Elder Titan's aura yeah. as No-Tails starts to scale that uh, piece up. So it's going to be very difficult for the Terrorblade to survive. We've actually seen this kind of draft before where Terrorblade is drafted into another Titan, and we saw how squishy it truly can be. He, I remember the last one we saw had a Butterfly, a Heart, and a Scotty, as well as a Manta style. Four amazing durability items for this hero, and he was still like flypaper to just uh, a couple of good right clickers. It's kind of like Elder Titan is against the uh, the Morphling and, and how he does against him because of all the armor that the Morphling gets up um, to a certain extent. Obviously, different situations, but... And not only that, they also have Weave 2. So it's a ridiculous amount of armor reduction coming out from Secret before they get any items at all. Mm -hmm. So I like the draft because of that. In Virtus Pro Polar, they're going to have to be very careful with their Terrorblade play. Now it's going to be Kuroki's hero more than likely for Secret. And we got to see what they grab for him. And honestly, this guy can play any damn hero he plays. I mean, he's got so much potential on, on so many heroes. We've talked about it. He's played multiple roles, so mm -hmm. he, he can work with pretty much anything. I think the anti-mage ban is pretty smart here because not only would it be really good for Kuro, but of course the mana void does pierce immunity when it comes down to disabling a target with that mini stun. So Digma wouldn't be so confident in his black holes, BKB or not, if the anti-mage would be on the field. They at least want to force out the doom with that. But uh, yeah, they're not going to have that option. Uh, again, the Medusa is still in the pool. Good AoE damage output and mm. uh, is pretty well set up by this team. However, it is a very slow and greedy pick when you consider that Dazzle and ET already want to get a little bit of farm we saw the last game they got like at least 70 cs a piece on the supports and then of course doom and brewmaster do need some items to come online as well yeah i mean they can fight early the the doom and the brew but generally you'd like to have a midas for the doom you'd like to get to that level six quickly brewmaster he would like to get to that blink which isn't too bad considering he'll usually just go for bottle boots nice. and they go for the legion oh my what a pick i haven't seen kuroki play this year i don't believe but i'm excited to see how it pans out for them yeah, a lot of direct lockdown now. I mean, you consider the Doom and the Duel as things that just take people out of the fight completely. No spells are going to be cast by those individuals for the duration of those debuffs. And uh, obviously they can guarantee the Legion will stay alive throughout her duel f with the Shallow Grave. So there's no way that Legion will be risking feeding away dual damage. And more often than not, she's going to be setting up a lot of potential damage from her side. Like the Elder Titan Earth Splitter can follow through on top of a duel and the heal bombs can come. And that will enable them to just build up a huge amount of physical damage that does on the ET enhance. So overall, a great pickup here. Does come with some risks, and uh, she's not really a farm-oriented hero, so you're going to have to... Although the Doom is farming quickly with the Devourer, the Legion, she's going to be looking for an item or two and then looking for kills. Mm. I mean, she wants to get involved. She wants to get that, that extra bonus damage from Duel, and we'll see how it pans out. This is a... I really like the draft from both teams, especially Aspic Zeus coming out from Virtus Pro Polar. That's going to be FNG on the Zeus, so more than likely a support here. Actually, wait, no, hold on. He might be playing a core mag playing... No, because mag's playing the Enigma. This is very interesting. They might swap this around before they get into the game, but mag Enigma is not something I see every day because he played core or mid yesterday for the most part. Yeah, he's, I mean, he obviously had a bit of a flexible playstyle. Like, he was playing the utility cast oriented mid here, playing the Razor. So, I mean, he definitely has a variance level of play. We saw him play a lot of Centaur in the past. But him playing the Enigma might be very interesting indeed if they do choice. And it does. The Wards and Courier FNG. A core. In two ring of protections to start for a little bit of extra durability you don't worry about your armor level when you're facing neutral creeps he's gonna be fighting some heroes on the lane this is rather interesting and i <laughs> i'm liking the idea coming up from virtus purple anything that's different on honestly sure. is, is exciting so We'll see how this goes for, for both squads. So, Virtus Pro Polar, important to note, they are 8-4. and four. So, currently both teams have the same amount of wins. Um, if they split 1-1, one, one, uh, they'll be tied with the exception of Secret having less losses, so they'll be ahead. So, um, Virtus Pro Polar looking to get up to first place here with this victory. And if they can 2-0 Secret, which would be pretty amazing, I'd say, considering mm. how well Secret played. But uh, 
We'll have to wait and see again. Two game series. Thanks for joining us on Toto Pit. Again, my name is Mom with me is Blaze. And of course, our stats man, as always, is Mop Packs. Jumping into the game, the rosters are finished. The draft has been completed. Virtus Pro Polo, they'll have DK Phobos pulling your puck. He's going to be going into the offlane, it looks like, as he did yesterday. We'll have Rain for X Gods, which is FNG on your Zeus. Currently in the mid lane, it is going to be Illidan Stormrage with the tag Shirley Fournette, which I believe is from Code Geass on the Terrorblade. Down bottom, we'll have Lilo playing your Vengeful Spirit, as well as Mag on your Enigma with the Double Ringer Protection Strat, and that'll round out your Virtus Pro Polar lineup. Yep, and looking over the side of Team Secret here, contesting the top rune, we've got Big Daddy No Tail grabbing up the Invis rune. He's your Boots First Elder Titan. You've got Dazzle played by Puppy here, going just full consumables, full support mode. Uh, a hero that could definitely benefit from items, but starting off, he feels he needs nothing but uh, just the tangos to his back. But Kurokai is going to be running on this uh, Legion Commander, so we'll see what he can accomplish here, but. Uh, he's going to be looking for early farm against that uh, puck, and that's going to be a little bit uh, harassed back, but he'll get good support. S4 in the mid lane here is going to be running the Brewmaster. He's going to be going for a bottle rush build, but he is already being pressured by two heroes, the instant metamorphosis Terrorblade and, of course, the Arc Landing from the Zeus. Finally down bottom, Simba is your doom, and he will be, in fact, uh, going boots first against the Enigma. Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting match at bottom. You talked about the dual lane mid coming out. This is not a dual lane we see often. In fact, we rarely see Zeus in a dual lane um, with the Terra Blade. It just doesn't happen because he's he's getting a little bit more play as a support. But, you know, it's kind of interesting they go for this. And you talked about the Metamorphosis. He might just use this on a cooldown um, in this lane just to harass S4. But we'll have to, they'll have to be careful. It's not like S4 can't get kills here. You want top lane, they throw out the Astral, Lil and DK Phobos are going to have to back away. No lockdown just yet, of course. When No-Tail gets his level 2, maybe they can start fighting, but um, they have no real way to stun any of these heroes yet. So, so far, so good for this top lane coming from Secret, I believe. Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of trying to keep the puck alive and maybe give a little bit of pressure so that they can't just chain pull back to back and get Dazzle and ET the easy experience they want. But I'm going to be really curious when the Enigma starts rotating. Actually, I'm mid. They are going to pop off the Reflection here to slow down S4. It's not going to be enough to bring him down, but will bring him low. He will be bottling up and looking for the bottom rune. Yeah, and this is, this is actually surprising. I, I know they want to get kills, but Reflection is not a skill we see used often uh, on Terrorblade. Specifically, a lot of the carry players will not go for that ability for some time. Meanwhile, they're going to contest over the top rune spot. No Tail is mm -hmm. going to get held up as it does get Magic Missile hold back away to the high ground. and Just some aggression coming out, although the Brewmaster did get the bottom rune, which is a double damage, and that's a nice pickup for him. Oh yeah, a potential instant crit against a low uh, armor Zeus, that could be very scary indeed. They do get the Basilius up for him, so he'll be okay in terms of mana regen and uh, not getting completely destroyed by this Brewmaster, but still, yeah, he's got the sustainability with that rune to keep on the lane and uh, get a, a good handful of CS here, so the dual lane pressure isn't completely zoning him out, and S4 is going to be coming online with that Blink Dagger relatively early this game. Simba down bottom, devouring up some Eidolons, actually Scorched Earthing and tanking up the rest. The Stout Shield is doing work for him, but it's still unnecessary damage. He just really wants to clear out those Eidolons before they split. Mm -hmm. He's done a nice job against this lane so far. This is not easy. My Eidolons can do a lot of damage to you. And even though you have a Stout Shield, he is not super tanky. Scorched Strength is good, but um, he only has one point in that. So, so far, though, it's going pretty well. 11 last hits from bottom lane. And he's actually out uh, CSing this inning on played by Mag. So, just something to keep in mind. Yeah, Enigma's actually a surprisingly good 1v1 hero. We always see him in the jungle, but when he does go out to the lane, he can handle himself 1v3 because he denies back the lane, but in 1v1, he generally, like, flourishes. Like, you consider it how a lone druid used to 1v1, because he can actually, like, uh, last hit and deny at the same time. Mm -hmm. Enigma has a lot of the same capabilities, though. Like you mentioned, Simba seems to be managing it quite well. In the meantime, we are going to be seeing S4 Corey out the boots here. Boots and bottle at 3.5 minutes for S4. It's like he's not even up against two heroes here. He is uh, acting like this is just a perfectly easy 1v1 stroll in the park for him and he's been able to really stay on point as far as the CS values go. Yeah, but at, at the same time, how often have we seen S4 flourish in a lane that shouldn't be going his way? I mean, uh, this guy has played so well. We've talked about his brewmaster, his puck has been phenomenal, but uh, more so than anything right now, it just feels like this dual lane is kind of a necessary for Virtus Propolar unless they can get some kills. You do see um, FNG stacking up some of these camps, which I do like. This is going to help out some farm coming in from their squad pretty soon and Mm -hmm. uh, so for now, it's just going to be kind of this farming game. We haven't seen First Blood yet. Uh, rather slow-paced. 
Top CS leaders are going to be Kuroki sitting at 21 and 21 for the Terrorblade. So Terrorblade is doing well, all things considered. Even if he is against a Brewmaster with double damage, he doesn't seem to mind. Yeah, and it is worth noting that uh, Team Secrets lineup in particular really comes online when the ultimates come about. Until the ultimates come out, none of these heroes are really that impactful. Maybe the Elder Titan is, but uh, even No Tail is kind of hesitant about his skill build here, holding one point in case he needs to do more damage with Order or if he actually needs the Echo Stomp setup. In either case, uh, we're looking at Puck doing okay here, level 3, not too shabby, but end of the day, DK Phobos is going to have to kind of rebound with the stacking that uh, I believe uh, F and, yeah, we were saying F and G has put it out, but Illidan is actually going to be the one to clean it up for now, just single targeting down these two sets of camps, so even though he doesn't get a Mud Golem spawn, he's like okay, I can just right click it down one way or another and that leaves FNG to take the lane for a short term. And we talk about how important it is for FNG or for Zeus players in general to get experience um, as quickly as possible. Ooh, man so. up down bottom. Simba yeah. man, he keeps on playing so aggressively against this Enigma. I mean, he's yeah. obviously has the bottle and Scorch Earth sustained, right. but still, this is very active. Yeah, he, I mean, he has the bottle, but he's not invulnerable. He does get his level 6, so he has Doom available, but uh, he really, I don't think, he'd kill Mag on his own at this point. Even if he did run at him, which he's doing so currently, he'll back away, but... They're kind of playing this Terrorblade mid like you would a Naga Siren. You stack up some camps, you head over there, he's got a Quelling Blade, he's got a, a ring of uh, Aquila. Uh -huh. It's almost the same build in terms of what you would see on a Naga Siren, but uh, he's just going to use his images as well as his Metamorphosis to farm up these camps as quickly as possible. Yeah. And that, that's going to be perfectly fine for him. He's going to be able to get a, a good early item here. At least the power treads out before he starts having to worry about Kuroki uh -oh. having a blink. Doom, but... FAG came too close. He could have lightning bolted from the high ground, but now he's going to get chased down. Ash was going to go through. There is a stomp. No, they don't even need it. And No Tail gets the first blood, rotating all the way down to the bottom rune spot. They were not ready for that Doom. Nice play coming out from Secret and a little bit of a over aggression from Virtus Pro Polar. And just see the activity from the supports here. I mean, Dazzle and Elder Titan already rotating in, taking the mid lane, taking the enemy jungle, and that's going to make it very difficult for Illidan Stormrage to feel confident towards his item progression here. If, like I said, if he had his treads up very shortly, then he'd be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm fine and dandy. I won't die to a duel easily. But now that it is kind of slowed down, they're getting control over this Ancient stack with this Observer Ward that Puppy just placed out, and I honestly think that uh, VP Polar are going to be at a loss for contesting their own resources. I like how aggressive Secret are playing, but at the same time, Virtus Pro Polar, they spot out No Tail, but he's too quick. They can't chase him down. Eventual Spirits moves speed, not quite there. S4 is diving deep. He's got a thousand gold. They're going to dive onto Illidan Storm Rage. There's going to be the usage of that Poison Touch. They're going to split as well, and Illidan is going to get caught out and killed Big immediately. Kill. That is a huge kill. Anytime you can kill any Tear Blade, it's just so impactful for your team. They're chasing after FNG as well. They're going to spot him out. But Cyclone, yeah, it's going to go. They're going to dispel magic. There's the Boulder Toss going in, and Big Daddy, he's got two points in this astral he's gonna have some right click he's gonna try to body block and he will do so clap's gonna come in goodbye fng my friend you are dead again yeah, just really good movement from both S4 and No Tail. They're re using the most out of the spirits right before they dispel, and then Big Daddy with the big bodies. And yeah, he's going to be able to get a soul ring out and pretty much immediately here. So very early uh, movement from him. He's going to be able to roam actively. Terrorblade, though, after that gank, just says, okay, screw it. Well, now you don't have your primal split. I'm going to start putting pressure in your tower. Drops off the metamorphosis, pulls up a conjure image, and starts uh, looking at the creep wave, but he is immediately forced back to the jungle. Mop packs with a the stat there that they are on a seven game winning streak, by the way, which is quite impressive, all things considered. So, see if they can continue their winning ways. But Virtus Pro Polar, no slouches. You talked a lot about DK Phobos, though he is up to treads, no six yet. So, in terms of offlaning, you look at Simba and his offlane experience in comparison to DK Phobos. Obviously, it's a bit different, but he needs to get back up. Meanwhile, Lil's gonna walk through. Ancient Stack is still here, and. This is going to be a point of contention as well. Bottom lane, are they going to look for a kill on Mag? They do have Simba with Doom on the backside. Mag has black holes, so uh, they have their ultimates ready. But Mag's sitting underneath the tower, and I don't know they're going to dive him for this. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> DK Phobos actually is going to be forced back off the top lane here. Got hit by a huge overwhelming odds from uh, Kuroki. He was able to just hit pretty much the entire creep wave, plus the pug, no phase shift, and now he's got a free lane to just push out, force a fortification, and uh, again, when that blink dagger comes out, I expect them to maybe go for a smoke play. They mm -hmm. can guarantee one duel right after the Legion Commander uh, has the blink dagger, then they're going to be able to kind of ramp up that tempo, and it's going to be on VP Polar to start kind of clustering together, avoiding... Uh, getting picked off and uh, kind of forced to, to condense the map a little bit less farm overall. 
Hey, you talked about blink, and then there's this other blink for S4 as well. So they're going to get two blinks right around the same time, the 9 to 10 minute mark, which is usually when we see it for these heroes. And um, I think this is going to become an issue real quick for Virtus Pro Polar. However, I, I feel pretty confident that if Illidan is given room, he mm -hmm. could absolutely take over this game. Yeah. So. The only major AoE they've got right now is the overwhelming odds to bring down the illusions. Uh, if he micros it very effectively, then honestly, there's not that much to be concerned about uh, for easy. Uh, unit removal. Obviously, there's different AoE factors, the Scorch Earth, the Shadow Wave, the Clap, but generally speaking, these illusions are going to be able to do work, to farm up, and to be just a, a major nuisance when they're pushing towers. Mm -hmm. Well, on top lane, Face Shift going in. I think Kroki has not picked up his Blink yet. He's 50 gold away, so we'll have that in a moment. Um, Secret are playing pretty aggressively. They're roaming around some supports. They're getting Simba involved, and they're going to look towards the mid lane. They might find Mag. This could be a big kill. Mm. He's getting close to his mech, and yeah, he's going to get caught out. Maybe Simba's going to pop the oh. doom. No, he can't get there. He's going to get fogged. Mag is going to make it away. Meanwhile, there's TP rotation to the split is gone. Ilden cycloned up, and he's probably dead. Stomp on Dalil. Ilden will fall, it looks like. Maybe, yes, he will finally go down. Lightning Bolt. FNG's like, please, no, God, no, not again. And he is going to die, it looks like, to the right click of uh, the usage of that Brewmaster promise. But and he pops the invis room. Wow, that's Are insane. you kidding? S4. Radiant wow, so lucky. I mean, yeah, it was all planned. I mean, that was exactly what he intended to do. They're going with the smoke, yes. not using the invis to initiate because he already has that insanely fast blink dagger. Like the 2v1 lane, you shouldn't have a blink dagger before the 10 minute mark, but here it is. He unveils it, he uses it to get set up two kills very nicely and contest the ancient stack. The metamorphosis was popped to try to start farming those ancients, and that's going to be on cooldown for another 80 seconds here. They really just need to find something big to bring themselves back into it, but I don't see them really turning a corner anytime soon. Zeus will be level 6 relatively shortly, and Enigma is well on his way towards his mechanism, but those are the only two major factors that are anywhere near turning the game. Yeah, I really think that they need to get a Smoke of the Sea gank, you know, maybe like a Dream Quill Black Hole, some big team fight going their way, but it's not easy to do against these heroes, especially when you have to deal with Doom, when Primal Split will be back off cooldown in a couple of moments. And Kroki has a Blink Dagger as well, and he's not even gotten involved in this game at all. He is 0 0 and 0, but he has 72 last hits. So Kroki doing what he does best in farming. And, um, this game is, is it's surprisingly already 5 to nothing in terms of the kills. So it's getting kind of out of hand a little bit. No, oh, most definitely. And there's going to be more offensive warding coming out from Team Secret as the minutes go by. Right now, there's just one in mid and one in the Ancients, but soon enough, they're going to be suppressing the Radiant Jungle as well. They're going to have a Midas up on Simba very shortly, so they can kind of have their cake and eat it too. They can build up farm while still being aggressive with the other four heroes. So um, that's just enabling them to be so active right now. And like FNG, he's moving out to the rune here. It's always a mistake when you're at risk in this kind of situation. Like, you know, there's no split, but there are so many other factors that could pick you off and you have to be extremely careful about your movements from this point forward yeah you're not sure where every hero is in the map and you don't want to get caught even if it's just the clap there could be a hero to follow it up with and obviously the blink dagger and look at this Kroki is just going to run over they have observer wards here I think they spotted them out rotating up to the high ground here so yeah they're going to back away Ilden's like I I don't think I want to fight that yet but bottom lane they're going to find out puppy Mag's going to go in with the Malthus Eidolon's doing some work as well, and there's going to be the Midnight Pulse as well coming down. He's going to try to TP away. He really wants to get oh. this kill. The Dream Quill comes in, and Puppy should fall here. And He didn't want to expend the Black Hole, but Dream Quill more than, more than worth it, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, at this point, they get one point on the board. It does cost a Dream Quill, but they needed something. So they do get that. Thunder God's Wrath will come out, and a stun onto S4 that's immediately dispelled. Blink clap in. Goodbye, Illidan, my friend. It was nice knowing you. They get the duel on FNG as well. And he's not taking too much damage. The split's gonna go. They won't get the duel victory, but they're gonna get the kill regardless, I think. One right click. No, they need one more. The boulder toss. That goes on to Lil. They can't get FNG. Not yet, anyways. Meanwhile, Max coming in. He wants Kuroki. Kuroki, this could be the first big kill. S4 does get the Zeus. Now the Doom coming in. Mag is like, I almost got the black hole up. I almost got a kill on Kuroki. It is one to nine. Four dead from Virtus Pro Polar, and it is what is turning into a disaster in this game secret is absolutely decimating them
Yeah, this is absolutely insane how well they're playing. The Brewmaster, I guess S4, did make a uh, mistake there with the timing. He actually wanted to just go for a straight auto attack on the Zeus, uh, bring him down that way, and then he could get the stun on somebody else. He did have to end up microing the Fire Panda around and chasing him down for the kill. Committed more resources than he intended, but you know it's easy to underestimate the, the Wind Panda's damage output. It does piercing damage, so it's not even like the full 100% mitigated by armor. It's like 75% and then mitigated. So Zeus will live uh, longer than he intended to, but in the end it's a 9 to 1 advantage for Team Secret and uh, Illidan Stormrage is going to have to carry out of his mind for this game. Right now, only at 4,000 net worth and he needs to double that within the next 10 minutes. Uh, no tail goes for a Perseverance. We've seen refreshers in the past, but this is very early to build one mm. if he is going it's for It's got to be like a Lincoln's, right? Yeah, I, I would think so. That makes the most sense. It's... Mm, I don't know. It's good against Magic Missile. I don't know if it... Maybe swap as well. They're going to jump on Illidan and... Yeah, they're going to go ahead and duel him up, and he's not dead yet. He, they're not going to get the duel, and they just can't get enough damage, but they kill him regardless. But that was a bit closer than maybe they wanted, so... Hmm. I figure it's just going to be a quick utility link. It stops Sunder from hitting anybody yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, just keeping people active. If you want your Legion Commander to go confidently jump again, he doesn't want to go for a BKB too early this game, but uh, the Lincolns would give him the confidence he needs. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like no -Tell when he goes for this Yule Scepter, but... I guess the Lincolns is fine too. I think they 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 prioritize the defensive item, the defensive utility over anything else. No tail is gonna walk into four Ooh. heroes. Uh, I think you are dead, yeah. my friend. Uh, Lightning bolt's gonna come in. Malefus, there's the midnight pulse. He is rather fast. It's not dead. They're gonna black hole for this just for a solo kill on No Tail. That's how far behind they far behind they are at this point. They do get the kill, so. You know, early black hole to get at least one pick off is nice, but they're going to jump in. Clap's going to go. S4 has split, and he's going to get it off before the magic missile comes in. Mag's going to get caught out, and he's just going to punch him to death now. There's the Cyclone coming through on the other side of things. Kuroki, duel up. Now Lil is in some trouble. There's the level death. I don't think they're going to get this win either, but they're going to get the kill regardless. They do get uh, Puppy on the backside, by the way. I don't know where he was, but he did get caught out. I think he was over at the Ancient Stack, perhaps. I'm not sure. Yeah, and they've been using this ancient sack really effectively as essentially a bait for Illidan. They invested so much time trying to get this so that Illidan can double up his net worth here that they're like, okay, well now that it's stacked up, we can't really take it, but we can contest you every single time you go for it. Waste all your metamorphosis and uh, kill you off time and time again. As for going right in, but oh. we'll get sundered instantly. And actually, it might pay for his brash actions here. We'll be able to walk away, but they have to doom to feel confident in it. Their retreat. And that's, S4 can play this aggressively because he knows he's got backup. He's like, yeah, it's fine. Even if I get sundered, I mean, there's a Blink Tagger already. Oh, they do get the kill. They do deny him, however. So the Astro is running all the way in, and DK Phobos right clicks him down just to make sure they don't give anything away. But he's still dead for 30 seconds. And Illidan, who was having a great time early on in the game, is starting to struggle. How many deaths does he have? Five deaths, the most in this game. Secret are putting all of the pressure on the core player, Illidan Stormrage for Virtus Pro Polar. Heck, they're even warding up Enigma's jungle here. Illidan and Mag are not going to be able to profit from this side of the map here. They're going to force them to the east where they're easily able to find kills on them and just get more and more opportunities to bring them down. So, really nice there. Following it up with the Roshan and... Uh, that is, it's just going to give them so much momentum. I mean, I honestly could see this ending within 22 minutes. Yeah, this is a, a team that is very, very strong very early on. It is also pretty strong later in the game that because mm -hmm. of Doom, because of uh, maybe S4 getting an Assault Kuros next, and Kroki getting some more items as well. But for Virtus Pro Polar, the, the only chance I think they have at this game now is if, you know, somehow Ilden can get a lot of farm in these next 5 to 10 minutes, and that is not easy to do. He's sitting on... A Blade of Alacrity, Treads, Ring of kill, and a Casual Wraith Band as well, so this is not his game per se, but we'll see how it pans out. The top three in net worth, again, are secret, sort of similar to how the the Navi game went earlier, I believe, and, well, <laughs> Virtus Pro Polar are struggling, to say the least, I mean, no yeah. other way to say it. Definitely. And it's hard to see where you go from here. I mean, obviously, Mag wants to go for the BKB. That's going to help, but it's not going to alleviate all their concerns here. There's still going to be uh, the Doom possibly to go out on him just to take him out entirely as soon as they see that BKB. And they can just worry about everybody else going in now onto Lil. Is this going to be the first duel one for Kroki? Yes, it is. Winner coming out for him. What number is that? And he doesn't have the Arcana, it looks like. He doesn't have the, uh, the number above. Just said the oh, he flap. does. It's just not showing that particular yeah. feature. Interesting. Mag's gonna get chased down. He has his mech. He's going for a BKB, and Illidan Stormrage might want to fight. S4 is just gonna say, oh, no, just take this illusion. 
And they're going to finally take the last tier one tower out from Virtus Pro in this top lane. Zeus ult's going to go in. And they were uh, trying to initiate, but the Zeus ult kind of backs them away. It didn't even do that much damage. Cliff's going to go into the tier one tower. And they're looking to fight here. They want a black hole. They're going to use it onto S4. They're going to catch him out, but that's just the age. It's a loose orb. Phobos jumps in. Kuroki. Now there's going to be the Drew Coil only onto one, and they just right click him down with Puppy. Now there's going to be a jump onto Illidan. Storm Rage. He is dead. S4 is godlike yet again. How often have we seen it? Sippa comes in and they tag team down that poor Venge. And now it looks like FNG is dead as well. And that is a double kill beyond Godlike Spree for S4. The only one alive currently is Mag, and he was barely living after that Doom. And I think that we might see, I hate to say it, but a GG call here pretty soon for Virtus Pro Polar. Yeah, I mean, they just essentially wiped them with the Black Hole fight. Uh, Team Seeker have just brought everything to bear in this game one here, firing on all cylinders, and he just goes to show you do not let that Brewmaster through. I mean, obviously they have a lot of great heroes, but this Brewmaster is top-notch here. S4 dominating the mid lane in spite of uh, major adversity and just pulling forward after that with the early blink. Uh, the reason why, by the way, um, the thing wasn't showing up uh, for Kuroki the cosmetic was that that was actually his first dual win uh he must have just bought this i i'm not or used it he must never play legion commander so we'll have to see um this is gonna be interesting um looks like now they will take the ancient stack coming out here secret are more than happy um yeah so there are some issues on twitch so that's unfortunate. Anyways, 19 to 3 score. Motpax pointed out to me the net worth lead, and it was 12,000 a minute ago. It's 20,000 now. 15,000 experience lead. That is actually just ridiculous. Well, I don't know what you do here if you're Virtus Pro Polar, but you really can't take a 5 on 5 foot as we saw top lane. They tried and they got trounced. All four of your cores, well, I should say, all three of the cores are on the top for Secret, and they have No-Tail up there as well. He's ahead of everyone else. This is a support who is now in fourth on the net worth chart. Shiva's guard is done at 20 minutes, and Mag is desperately trying to find a kill. He would use Black Hole if he had it up against Puppy if he could, but he just backs away, and Puppy's going to be the one to get the Eagle Scepter this game, which I like a lot. He also has his Medallion of Courage, and he'll just continue to farm up and uh, help his team out when necessary. FNG sitting on Tranquils. I mean, this guy doesn't have anything, nor does anyone else. Little has nothing. Does he have boots? Yeah, he does. Okay. Mac has the most on the team. They're going to get the stomp up. They're going to mech him up as well, but it's a Maelstrom choice for Kuroki, which I actually don't mind. This is nice. Gives you the attack speed, gives you that extra bit of damage. Plus, you already have the blade mail. What is this FNG? Chop from Simba. Very nice. <laughs> All right, no tail. <laughs> Jesus. So, 21 minutes into the game. Blink in from S4. It is going to be the Silk Rest, no surprise there. Can they catch anybody out of position? Kroki's like, I want to fight, let's go. He pops to press the attack, but it's a bit too, too late as FNG notices that they are rotating in and he backs away. Top lane, Puppy might get caught out here, lose your orb. The Waiting Rift did go, but he's alive. The TP rotation coming in, and it only takes one rotation, and he's going to try to stomp. It looks like he misses completely. But down bottom, Simba, double damage rune, S4 jumping in as well. They take down a tier 2 tower for absolutely nothing. It's free. And at this point, Virtus Pro Polar are just scratching their heads and like, well, what the hell can we do, guys? I... <laughs> can we get anything done? Hello? S4 has split. The Silk Cross almost done. They'll put pressure on the tier 3 tower. I don't know how much they'll push in. I'd imagine they want to wait for all the tier 2 towers to go down. There's the duel coming in from Kroki. Maybe not. FNG gets caught out. Good swap there, but it doesn't matter. They get the kill regardless. Kroki taking a lot of damage. The swap goes in, or rather the uh, primal split. They're going to use the Cyclone. The Doom immediately onto Illidan Storm Rage. Goodbye, my friend. You are dead. They do deny him. Nicely played, but I mean, it doesn't matter. He's dead for 40 seconds. Although Kroki's backing away. S4 doesn't blink out. He has no mana for clap either. They don't even have no tail or puppy for these fights. At all. That is a three versus five. Although the TP did come in a bit late from Illidan Storm Rage. Still, it is a three versus five. And now they will continue to go to the high ground here. Secret are putting all the pressure on. And this tier three tower is going to take fall. Big winning Rift going in. No Dream Quill though. He jaunts out. I don't think he has it. In fact, it's on cooldown for another 40 seconds. 
That could have been a good defense. S4 now. There's going to be the Lincoln Spear from No Tail. It's popped up on S4. And I think they should push it into mid. I don't know if they really need to force this tier 3 tower down. Just put some more pressure onto it occasionally and then go from there. Especially considering Split is down for another 57 seconds. Doom is down for 44 seconds. Take the tier 2 mid. Maybe back up, take Roshan, and go from there. Rosh is up in... Well, we don't know yet. It'll show itself soon. So, okay. it, it doesn't matter that Ilden uh, is, you know, they're they're pushing this back because Ilden is still dying. And Well, welcome back, my friend. Yeah, sorry you, about that. Uh, Minor emergency to take care of, but now we're back in the action good. only to see this game just even worse for VP Polar. I mean, 21 and 3. The Lincoln Sphere, obviously, like you, we're looking at, came out, and Shiva's already up on the Doom. Like, how do you deal with a Shiva's Guard Doom? You're 24 minutes in with all these other extremely farmed heroes at the back. Oh, oh the they're going to do out. as well. Earth Splitter. Oh my gosh, they will kill this Cyclone coming in from the Yule Jeez. Scepter. And Mag is like, please, Darius. you've got to be kidding me. Time to GG out, boys. They do. DK Fobo zoomed up. Double kill for Simba. Will they wipe them? It looks like, yes, the split is going to go off at the end of the game. Oh, they don't get the last kill. But Secret is going to be victorious in this first game. And Blaze, my friend, what a game from Secret. They trounced Virtus Pro Polar. Yeah, just absolutely destroyed. They picked them apart. They knew the weakness of their lineup in every facet, and it seemed like they just pushed every little button there. I mean